So the topic I was presenting today was a, I am a member of the Vigo Cancer Committee and we changed the staging for cervical cancer so we have a new staging procedure. Staging itself of course is just a language as to the disease spread normally at presentation and that's the international language we use. Staging is very very important so that we understand what we're talking about at big meetings like this and that's stands for all cancers and on this occasion one of the issues we've had for many years in cervical cancer is that women with a stage 1 disease could have disease spread to the lymph glands in the pelvis but they would also, if it was positive or negative, uh, they would all be deemed stage 1 even though the outcomes are very very different. So in essence the main change to the staging procedure for cervical cancer now is the acceptance of the fact that those women where the disease is spread into the lymph glands in the pelvis or elsewhere will now be called stage 3 patients and that there are two ways you can determine that. One is you might do some imaging. Generally speaking it may well be an MRI or CT scan or more likely a PET scan and secondly you can also stage them pathologically i.e. when you do an operation thinking the nodes were negative and you find they're positive, we call it a pathological staging. So this is trying to embrace an issue that's been ongoing actually for quite a few decades where clinicians were very uncomfortable and didn't see the logic of why a person's called stage 1b could have no spread and could also have spread. It didn't intuitively and logically make no sense. So this is addressing quite a long-term issue in the field of cervical cancer staging for many years. So I think the reception to it has already been very positive. Uh, it will mean, of course, that when you make these kind of moves, it's possible that for stage one disease, you might actually see the survival patterns changing slightly because you're taking out a group of patients who do worse. So you get this phenomenon that occurs is that by moving patients with a poor outcome from one stage to a different stage where the outcome is the same, you get this blip, it's called a Will Rogers phenomenon, and look like stage one patients are doing well, or even better than before, but it's only a movement of patients to another stage. So that will probably happen. Uh, but the important thing is getting the message out that the change is now uh, published just a couple of months ago, and to get people around the world to gradually adopt this uh, within standard clinical practice. So that was the main thrust of the first meeting, was to present the international stance, if you like, on the new staging of cervical cancer, um, plus discussions on others that we haven't changed and the reasons why we're not changing those, but what may develop in the future for some of the other gynaecological cancers. So primarily it was about that and it seemed to be very well received. In fact, most people seem to be very happy that this change has eventually occurred. So one of the issues, it will take some time, it could probably be up to a year depending on where people are working. For example, if we take the UK base, we have cancer registries, the data we can start collecting now, but the amalgamation of that data in the full adoption might take up to 12 months, but we'd be encouraging people to keep the old staging and the new staging in parallel. But for some of the systems within the cancer registries, for them to adjust to the new staging, they have to go through quite a lot of processes to make sure they have everything in the computers correct. And you would think that could be done by the flip of a button. It doesn't work that way. So it may well be for it to be fully embedded where we're gathering the information, purely using that staging to get population outcomes. It might take probably up to a year we're giving that. Well, I think it means that for patients, we'd always been able to say to them that you have a stage one, but the nodes were involved. We'll automatically give them further treatment. So it doesn't really impact on the patients in the sense they knew that if the nodes are positive compared to a person with no negative uh, cervical cancer, that the outcome was going to be different because it had spread. So it doesn't kind of, if you like, alter what we're doing with the patients. It's just the fact that the identification is in more in parallel with the outcomes as well. So we've been managing the patients appropriately, it's just mixing both these groups together was not probably the correct way of doing it in the longer term.